every blog post has to start with a keyword. And it can be really tough to find good keywords to write about. If you're a brand new blog, you know that the chances of you competing for a very high level term in your particular niche is going to be tough. So you really rely on long tail keywords to get you started. Those are going to be zero volume and low volume keywords. There are going to be a lot of informational types of blog posts where you're answering people's questions. I use Low Fruits quite a bit, but another tool that I've recently discovered and have purchased is keywords people use. In fact, I was looking for keywords for a new niche that I want to write about. And within an hour, I had 50 keywords that I was going to be able to use for my first 50 articles for a blog. I'm really impressed with this tool. I really like it. It's easy to use. It's very affordable. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'll go through the various features that the tool has. It does a lot of things, so I may not cover everything in this one video, but I'm going to do more videos in the future so you can get the most out of this tool if you choose to purchase it. But let's go ahead and take a look at keywords people use. It's a solution to discovering the questions people ask. It's going to provide you data based on Google's People Also Ask, Google Autocomplete, Reddit and Quora. It will also look at semantic keywords. It has a keyword generator, which is helpful if you're trying to look for some new keywords. It has something called Content Explorer and an AI assistant. The two things that I'll probably concentrate on most today is the People Also Ask piece, but I will try to run through everything just to give you a little bit of a view into what the tool does. Let's say you want to to start a keyword search. And really, this is where I normally start is using the People Also Ask tool. I think it's great for finding long tail keywords. In this case, let's go ahead and look at this broad keyword, which is gravel biking. I do a lot of mountain biking. I've had some gravel bikes in the past. And so this is a topic that I know about. You know, I will say that if you have some expertise in your particular niche, it's always going to make it a lot easier for you to find those gems, those keywords that you know people are going to be interested in learning more about and use those for topics. We'll start our search and here we go. It gives you this really cool visualization that you can look at. Basically, it takes you from this top level gravel biking. What is the point of, gra of a gravel bike? Is gravel cycling harder than road cycling? What is the meaning of gravel cycling? And then it breaks it down even further you can read all of these people also ask questions uh, that are generated by people looking for information about gravel bikes. And typically I find a lot of long tail keywords for blog posts right at this level, but you notice these plus signs. Anytime you click on one of these plus signs, it's going to even delve deeper into the topic and you can find even more keywords that way. In this case, you know, I can see right in here, there's lots of things that would be pretty interesting to write blog posts about and would be good long tail keywords. But here's one, why get a gravel bike instead of a mountain bike? So what if we wanted to delve deeper into this and wanted to write some more content specifically in this area? Click on the plus sign, you get these other people also ask searches that were done. For instance, can a gravel bike replace a mountain bike? That would be a great blog post. But here are some even deeper, more niche types of articles you could write. What is the best bike to convert to a gravel bike? So some people do mountain bike to gravel bike conversions. Can I turn my bike into a gravel bike? Now, you may not want to write about every one of these because if you used all of these keywords, you'd start to cannibalize on each other. There's something called, you know, keyword cannibalization. So if you were to write, can I turn my bike into a gravel bike? And then what is the best bike to convert to a gravel bike? You know, these are closely aligned keywords where you would probably write information that would encompass both of these in one article. So if you did, what is the best bike to convert to a gravel bike? That would also talk about, can I turn my bike into a gravel bike? So you do want to be careful that you just don't write a blog post on every one of these things because then you start this cannibalization process and you actually start to hurt your rankings because you're writing about the same topic over and over again, and that's not always a good thing. So what are some of the things that you can do here? 
besides just look at this content and determine whether any of these make for good keywords for a blog post. You can download this as a PNG file and look at it that way and save it. You can download it as a CSV file, pull it into Excel, pull it into Google Sheets. The thing that I typically do is formulate these topic clusters, which helps me do more evaluation of the data. You can do topic cluster here, click on it. It's going to group the questions into clusters. So this just makes it easier for you to evaluate everything that that uh, was shown in that other visualization. What I use many times is I use the related searches to this. So I'll click to see what other related searches have occurred around this topic. And here you can see, here are some of the people also ask related searches. There's a lot of these, you know, A versus B type searches that people are doing. And these make for great blog posts too. So you may also take something like gravel bike versus mountain bike and put it in as a people also ask search and see what comes up. You can see some of the questions that have been asked in Reddit and Quora as well. well. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other ways we can use this tool. I'm sure you're familiar with Google Autocomplete. If you've used Google in the past, this is one way that a lot of people looked for keywords for blog posts. For instance, you might put in which gravel bike, and then you can see here are all things that people have put into Google in the past and searched for, which gravel bike to buy, which gravel bike is best on the road. These are all the autocompletes that Google does for you. And you can go through and put a cue in, you know, which gravel bike quality is best, which gravel bike entry level. So you could write a post around entry level gravel bikes, what makes a good gravel bike. This is the way autocomplete would work. And it is a free way to look for keywords, but it's very time consuming. If we go back and we put in gravel bike, we select Google autocomplete, and we do a search. And then what it's going to bring back for you is this visualization. And again, this gives you sort of this all encompassing view of what a lot of the autocomplete types of terms were used that people pulled up. Now, you wouldn't write necessarily a blog post for every one of these, but it starts to give you some ideas to look at. The visualization is a good place to start. You can eliminate certain things in the visualization. So if you wanted to reduce it and make it a little easier to view, you could start to take out some of these statements and then the visualization changes. But let's go ahead and do a topic cluster. I think the topic clustering makes it very easy for you to look at this Google autocomplete data. Data. So here it's just taken all of that Google autocomplete data and then clustered it for you. Uh, a lot of times when I look at this, I also see these top level clusters give me some ideas for navigation on a new website. So this would be a great tag for you to use for a variety of posts in gravel biking, gravel bike basics, right? And then here are a bunch of ideas that you could use. And maybe you might take one of these terms here. You don't write about it, but you use it and pull it back over into a people also ask search to delve deeper into that topic. Now, let's say you're interested in understanding what people are asking about in Reddit and Quora as it pertains to gravel bikes. After the Google Helpful Content Update, I noticed that Reddit and Quora listings were once again at the forefront of many search returns that I was getting for different topics. That's why I think understanding what people are looking for in Reddit and Quora are, are important. And you can start to go through and look at some of the questions that people are asking. And again, downloadable as a CSV to pull it into Google Sheets or Excel. You can look at related searches. You can look at a different viewpoint of this. You can look at it from a data standpoint just to make it a little easier for you if you don't like the visualization piece. But you can also look at semantic keywords. So semantic keywords uh, are words that are loosely associated with gravel biking. They have a broader context, but I'll show you how you might use them. But here are the semantic keywords related to gravel biking. For example, cyclocross bike is loosely related to gravel bike. And you notice that a lot of the things here are bringing back products like specialized gravel bikes, Scott gravel bikes. Those may all be 
places where you might write about a specific type of bike. And then here, how to choose a gravel bike. You might take how to choose a gravel bike, put it into people also ask. That's what I typically do with the semantic keywords is use them as sort of a springboard for deeper searching. The keywords people use tool also has a keyword generator. We'll again stick with gravel bike. We'll do a search. Here it brings back this visualization with a lot of various types of keywords that are related to gravel bikes. Again, downloadable. You can pull in the top 10 keywords. You can pull in related searches. You can just look at it from a standard data viewpoint. So this is great. So gravel bike shoes, again, maybe this is a top level tag for your site. And then under that, you're going to have different articles about gravel bike shoes. You know, if you put gravel bike shoes for men and did a people also ask search on it, then you could get into some additional keywords that you could write about. Let's say we were interested in understanding more about gravel bike pedals and some keywords that we might be able to write blog posts about, put in gravel bike pedals, do a search, and then you get all this information here. Flat pedals on gravel bikes versus clipless, etc. I mean, there's a bunch of blog posts right here just around gravel bike pedals, gravel bike shoes, etc. That's why the keyword generator is nice. It gives starts to give you some ideas to think about. Content Explorer, if we look at that, do a search. So what this is going to do for you, it's going to go in, it's going to look at the SERPs, it's going to pull back some of the articles that have been written about gravel biking. So gravel biking is a very high level topic. You know, here's an article, what is gravel racing from gravel biking basics to gravel racing. The interesting thing that you can do here, it pulls in this information from the SERPs from these top articles about this term gravel biking. Now, this alone doesn't help me very much for finding keywords, but here's what you could use it for. You can use this article outline tool, which is very, very slick. Let's let it create an article outline using their AI. So the nice thing about the article outline tool, particularly for something like this, where you've used this very broad seed keyword gravel biking. It creates this very complete article outline. You could pull this into a long form, a content writer. Let's say you're using Koala Writer or SEO writing, for example. You could pull this particular article outline into either one of those tools and have it write this broad article on gravel biking for you. So the really cool thing is, let's say you've got other articles you've written about gravel bike techniques and skills. Now you link those back to this top level article on gravel biking. You know, it's just a, a nice tool for doing that. It's very slick. It's why I use this tool a lot. It does have this AI assistant. We'll quickly look at that. The AI assistant will create an article with an FAQ. It creates topical maps, content briefs, silo structures. Let's say we want to look at a silo structure for gravel biking. Let's generate that. This just gives you an example of a silo that you could use for a blog or a website. So a homepage with an introduction to gravel biking, benefits, features, and then in this case, the AI has decided to break things out into gravel biking routes. So if you're into gravel biking, the big deal with it is there's lots of different routes around the United States that people sort of have on their bucket list that they want to take, and they've broken it down by that. And then you can even get down at regional routes, gravel biking gear, accessories, apparel, tools and maintenance, tips and techniques, events. I mean, it, it just shows you how you could formulate a silo structure to ensure a logical and organized flow of information for both users and search engines. So if you have a new niche and you're not really sure how to put together your topical map and your tags, this particular feature is worth its weight in gold. It just saves you a lot of time trying to figure it out on your own. So that's just the silo structure, right? It'll do content briefs, topical maps, and articles. The articles are pretty generic. I wouldn't consider this to be a long form writing tool but it does give you a draft that you can use uh, and it is helpful from that perspective. So now that we've taken a look, uh, sort of a high level look at all of the features of the tool, let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing. The good thing about it is this, if you choose a yearly plan, you're going to get two months free. Now, 
I have in the description a link and a discount code. If you use my link and the discount code, you're going to get 10% off your first year. That's going to save you some money. I will tell you the plan that I'm using right now is the light plan. It's 150 searches a month. I have found that to be plenty. I think if you have one or two domains, maybe even three domains, this is going to give you plenty of searches in a month. If you want to try it out for free, you do get 10 searches a month. So you can just try it out and see if you like it and see if it makes sense for you. I strongly urge you to consider the light plan because 10 searches you know, you can go through that pretty quickly. And I think that, you know, you want to be able to really dig down deep and find those long tail keywords. And to be able to do that, you really need more than those 10 searches per month. I am an affiliate for keywords people use. So if you do use my link, if you use my discount code, I will get a small commission. So they have a standard plan. They have a pro plan. They have this unlimited plan. You know, if you had a team and a lot of domains that you're looking for keywords for, you might go up into one of these plans. But for most people, the light plan or the standard plan is going to be plenty. Like I said, you know, I'm spinning up this new blog. I went through this morning, spent an hour doing searches and came up with about 50 articles that I could write about in an hour. And essentially, I think use maybe 40 credits of my 150 credits for the month. And, you know, I was really doing a lot of research and delving deep into some of these different categories. I knew I was going to go through the searches quickly because of that. But again, I still have, you know, 110 searches left for the month, which is, which is plenty, I think. If you have any questions about the tool, I'll try and answer them in the comments section. Again, this is keywordspeopleuse.com. I strongly recommend you go take a look at the tool. I am really enjoying the tool and finding lots of great keywords to write about. I use this in conjunction with the my other keyword research tool that I like. This is lowfruits.com. Both of these are great tools. I would highly recommend if you're having problems finding keywords for your blog. This is getting increasingly more difficult to do because there's so many people spinning up blogs, right? So Having access to good keyword tools is important and doing it with free tools is very, very difficult. So I highly recommend keywords people use. If this doesn't look like it's going to work out for you, check out my videos on lowfruits.com. It's also another way to find long tail keywords. And it's a nice alternative if you can't afford Ahrefs or you can't afford SEMrush, which I cannot. This is a good solution for finding those keywords that you need for a new blog. So until next time, take care.